All right, we're only one day away from Halloween. So Halloween of course we, Eve. I know, we got to bring a little spooky stuff to Pattern. So welcome back to Pattern. We're excited to follow Eco Explorer Mike Corey on another adventure to long forgotten places. And this week is a doozy. This week on Abandoned Exploration, Corey takes us to a very creepy hotel in Ooh. Mexico City, just in time for Halloween. And, and with I found Dr. Ghosts. Postel. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we found ghosts. They talked to us. I'm not really cut out for it. I like had to like change my clothes like four I times. Say, did you really I was change so sweaty. Clothes? And yeah, no, I think like one of those shrieks may have gone too far. So, so <laughs> Alex, why were you the one that was left alone? Why not Posty? Uh, I mean, well, one, ghosts love me, and two, ghosts love me, and people love to watch me with ghosts because I am terrified. The I... question is, did you bring one back with you? No, thank goodness, because last <laughs> time one of our producers did bring I one guess. back. Yeah, and like heard like a child and a woman talking to her in the middle of the night. I did not bring anybody back. Maybe, I was like, you'll all love it here. Maybe it's because you talk a lot. And maybe. the ghost is like, no, I, I think I've spent enough time with the ghost. Yeah. like quiet. And they were like, that girl would not shut up the whole time she was in that. They it was like alone. nervous chatter. So, maybe yeah. that's the thing. If you don't want a ghost around you, follow Alex Wilson's lead. Just keep there talking to it. They will move on and they will move on very quickly. <laughs> They're like, you know what? I wanted eternal peace, not whatever you're offering. And let me tell you, I do not offer eternal peace to anybody. Let's take a peek at your temperatures. It is a great day. Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. I love cold. I love cold because, like, you, we, you know, like, we've eaten whole bags of Halloween candy. Like, let's put some sweaters on and hide things. <laughs> stretchy pants. Let's hide things. It's stretchy yes. pants season. <laughs> All righty. Well, the world's glaciers are disappearing. Fast. Welcome back into Pattern, your home for the latest climate uh, news in climate change, sustainability. I'm Molly McCollum. And I'm Colleen Coyle. So let's get into today's hot topics. Here's our first one. Tesla owners in Los Angeles may soon be able to fill their bellies and their cars at the same time. Tesla has obtained permits for combination supercharging station, drive-in theater, and... I too. I was just thinking, so we had some friends visiting, and they had an EV, and they had to step out for about 20, 30 minutes, charge the car. Uh, and so if you had some entertainment or a way to do it that, I don't know, it doesn't just seem like you're sitting in your car, I, I think it's great. That's happened to me before where I haven't planned enough. Mm -hmm. I do not have a Tesla, so I can't go to a Tesla charging station. Yeah. And the universal chargers tend to be a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. um, so I just ended up sitting in my car yeah. <laughs> just waiting for it to charge. I would have loved to like go eat or watch a movie or something, especially drive-in movie theaters, which by the way, I think are a lost art. I know, it, it's, it's wild. I I mean, over the decades, I mean, we had thousands of them. You could find mm -hmm. them everywhere. Now only a few hundred. There are still even some around us here in Atlanta. I'm sure in other places there's some. So you ever wonder if some of these may get converted into something that brings them a little more to the present, but also right. that nostalgia that everybody loves is still there. Have you been it's to one? Yes, I have. I, I think they're so cool. I think they're really cool. I've only been to one, and that was the Admiral Twin Drive-In Movie Theater in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which if, if you've seen The Outsiders, it's ah, yeah, that's okay. that's the, the drive-in movie theater in there. But it was so great, and I always wanted to go back, but I never made it. So imagine if you could charge your car while doing all this, and you can eat lunch. 100%. Okay. I would do it. <laughs> On board. All righty, next hot topic. A New York man, get this, is facing up to 20. And to take it a step further, what happens is as they're making these baby glaciers, they're then bringing them up to caves. Mm -hmm. They're stored very high elevation so, so they that, can't melt. So they can't melt. And so that's how they're starting to protect them and starting to grow the glaciers. And what better person to ask than the people that have been on this land for decades and, know and it decades so and well. know it. I mean, there's something to be said for going back to these traditions mm -hmm. and, you know, loving the land like we're supposed to, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, it's not just about the glaciers, but the glaciers provide the water to the rivers, and much of Asia needs those rivers. So it's kind of just a chain reaction of things that hopefully is for the better. I'll be interested to see how, how it goes over yes, the next couple of years. Well, sometimes you just need a mom to take care of things. That's why these moms are on a mission to solve. And welcome back to Pattern. We know moms worry about us. You got two moms right here. <laughs> Are we eating enough, getting enough sleep? And now they're worried about how climate change will shape our future. Science Moms works to combat that worry with knowledge. Dr. Melissa Burt joins us now. She's part of Science Moms, and she's also the Assistant Dean for Diversity and Inclusion at the Walter Scott Junior College of Engineering at Colorado State University. Dr. Burt, thank you so much for joining us. We want to get the details first, though. Science Moms, that's not just his name. You're scientists who also happen to be moms. Tell us about how this group came to be. 
Yeah, we are. And, okay, got to ask, we had a science mom on our show just a year ago. Since then, you guys have rolled out a major ad campaign. Tell us a little bit about that and just how you're breaking down the myths of climate change. Dr. Melissa yeah, Burt from Science Moms, thank you so much for joining us today and the great information. Now, I have to say, go science, go moms. That's an awesome yes. group. Moms get it done. They do. I know. <laughs> we, oh, we, we try to get it done every day. Of course, here, both of us, now moms. I mean, we are raising the next generation. And so there's so many things to instill, even at a young age. And it's great to get together with other moms and brainstorm ideas of how we can teach our kids what's going on with the planet. And not, and like she said, not everyone that is in the group is a mom. Exactly. So just, you know, and everyone's part of this world, right? So just, mm -hmm. you know, brainstorming ways that we can make our planet better in the future. There, there are plenty of ways that someone may be a mom to someone in, a, in right. a different way. And so you can still have a very big impact on their life. All right, for more stories like this, check out Pattern, with whether across the country. A dog mom. A dog yes. mom. I have yes. a 17 year old diaper wearing chihuahua who I uh, you know, preach about for the future because so, he's gonna outlive me. Let's you know real. what, you're changing diapers. So That's right, counts. I'm still yes. changing diapers. <laughs> they just have a decrepit chihuahua. So, you know, we all do our part. <laughs> you know, this, today it's a Those tough guys one. guys are the areas that we'll watch tomorrow for trick-or-treating as well and you kind of need a different halloween costume if you celebrated this weekend yes, and if you're yes. celebrating on no, actual halloween seriously at least yeah. here in atlanta it was like man you got to have one for the weekend and then one for tuesday totally different weather coming in yeah nobody's dressing as Baywatch uh, tomorrow it's gonna be very <laughs> or, very cold for you that. might be or, they may. or you might be and if so you are a trooper <laughs> a very big trooper all righty is there an easy way to remove all that carbon dioxide out of our Welcome back into Pattern. You use a vacuum to clean your house, so can we use a vacuum to clean our atmosphere? The Biden administration is making a $1.2 billion investment on carbon vacuums to deal with climate change. I feel like the vacuum is like attached to me at all times. Uh, so <laughs> the first two projects will kick off in Texas and Louisiana. CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry shows us how the investment will be a global testing ground for this new technology. I think it's funny. We think of vacuuming as a chore. Yes. Like, oh, who's going to vacuum this mm -hmm. time, you know? But all the states were competing to who gets those who facilities. Gets yeah, who gets to vacuum? <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting because we can't all be reactive. We have to be proactive, too. And so uh, we still have to change what's going into the atmosphere, even if we're trying to take some out. But I, I was diving deep into this. It's uh, you a know, really interesting topic. It's a very, it's a very interesting thing, but I, it was hard for me to fathom, like, how exactly does this work? But they're taking the carbon dioxide out of the air. They're putting it into like a liquid form, injecting it down deep into the earth. And so we actually have a lot of space down there. Now, it's going to be down there indefinitely, like 10,000 years. So right. eventually you would run out of space. That's why you are going to have to also change what you're putting into the atmosphere. But it's it's very it's very intriguing. If you have a chance to just take a couple minutes yeah. and read about how carbon vacuuming works, it is so, so fascinating. And I dug real deep. Okay, so there's like 3,000 gigatrons of space that they have mapped out nationwide. Which is a number that I'm like, I, I can't even, so then I was like, visualize that kind of number. A gigatron, a metric gigatron is like 2.2 trillion pounds, I looked up. So if you do all that math, you get the abacus out, you start, you know, <laughs> uh, that's a lot of space, but again, eventually it will still run out. Let's go to Alex Wilson. Alex, you want to crunch some numbers I'm for us? the numbers right now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> no, West Virginia, little... get a little wintry weather. I'm just glad it's going to be gone by Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you? I don't know. I like, I kind of like it. It's, but it's, I'm ready for it. That's scary to me. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. I was true. about to say, cold, drizzly, yeah. snow, that's all very oh, scary. Oh, no, the drizzle, too. no, the snow can stay. <laughs> well, here's what's coming up tomorrow on our special Ooh. Halloween episode of Pattern. Climate change.